hope so. She looks great. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. creating the human race will that man and wife should be one join we pray in a bond of inseparable love these your servants who are to be united in the covenant of marriage so that as you make their love fruitful they may become by your grace witnesses to charity itself through our Lord Jesus Christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit God forever and ever A reading from the book of Tobit. On their wedding night, Tobiah rose from bed and said to his wife, Sister, get up. Let us pray and beg our Lord to have mercy on us and to grant us deliverance. Sarah got up and they started to pray and beg that deliverance might be theirs. They began with these words. Blessed are you, O God of our fathers, Praised be your name forever and ever. Let the heavens and all your creation praise you forever. 
You made Adam and gave him his wife Eve to be his help and support. And from these two, the human race descended. You said, it is not good for the man to be alone. Let us make him a partner like himself. Now, Lord, you know that I take this wife of mine, not because of lust, but for a noble purpose. Call down your mercy on me and on her, and allow us to live together to a happy old age. They said together, Amen, Amen. The word of the Lord. Thy Lord is kind and merciful. Thy Lord is kind and merciful. Thy Lord is kind and merciful. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all oh my being. Bless God's name. Bless the Lord, and forget not his benefits. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. God pardons all your iniquities and comforts your sorrows, redeems your life from destruction, and crowns you with the kindness. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. Merciful, merciful, and gracious is our God, slow to anger, abounding in kindness. The Lord is kind and merciful. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, strive eagerly for the greatest spiritual gifts, but I shall show you a more excellent way. If I speak in human and angelic tongues, but do not have love, I am a resounding gong or a clashing cymbal. And if I have the gift of prophecy and comprehend all mysteries and all knowledge, if I have fa all faith so as to move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away everything I own, and if I hand my body over so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It is not jealous. It is not pompous. It is not inflated. It is not rude. It does not seek its own interests. It is not quick-tempered. It does not brood over injury. 
It does not rejoice over wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. There was a wedding in Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the wedding. When the wine ran short, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, how does your concern affect me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servers, Do whatever he tells you. Now there were six stone water jars there for Jewish ceremonial washings, each holding 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, Draw some out now and take it to the head waiter. So they took it, and when the head waiter tasted the water that had become wine without knowing where it came from, although the servants who had drawn the water knew, the head waiter called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves good wine first, and then when people have drunk freely, an inferior one. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this as the beginning of his signs in Cana in Galilee, and so revealed his glory, and his disciples began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Wedding day, and on wedding days, there is a word that is at the forefront of our minds and our hearts, and that word, of course, is love, L-O-V-E. Uh, Thomas and Rachel love each other, and so they are getting married. However, I do think there's a lot of confusion when it comes to language today, uh, when it comes to words. We, we tend to use words a lot, and probably one of the most overused words in the English language is love. Love has been boiled down to any sort of, like, affection, something that makes us feel good. We say, oh, I just love that, or I love this. Like, I, I, I love pizza, or I love beer, or I love the browns, if that's your, uh, God bless you. Uh, but we use that word a lot, and certainly when we say that Thomas and Rachel love each other, we, uh, we have to figure it's greater than their love of pizza or food or anything like that. There's something beyond here. And ultimately, when we are looking to define love, the best place that we can go is to the church and to the saints, of course. And then 
Jesus, obviously. You knew that was coming. We're in a Catholic church here, this Christian church. And so Jesus is the very embodiment of, of God's love for us. He, he, because he was God. He was fully human, fully divine, and we say that God is love. And so Jesus takes on human flesh and shows us the power of love. That's the power of love, right? And, and he shows us the, the power of love and exactly what love looks like. And it, it's all shown right here as he, in the crucifix, as he is hanging on the cross. This is my body given up for you. Thomas and Rachel, that is what your, your, your marriage is going to be centered around. Now, don't panic because it's Jesus hanging in pain, okay? Yes, you will have pain in your marriage because love hurts. Ooh, love hurts, right? Okay, and that is, uh, there's some Nazareth fans here. Okay, but I, I think that's really important for us to remember, though. But 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 true love is always born of it's always uh, it's always preceded by and followed by pain and joy. That that's life. Life is up and down, uh, ups and down. It's a roller coaster, and living a life in love is going to be that. But we need to know that this is not a sign of hopelessness. This is the contradiction of the cross, that Jesus, his body on the cross, turns this thing of pain into something that is joyful and hopeful. And so you ought to remember, we need to remember, that ultimately your marriage, especially in today's world, is a sign of contradiction. Uh, marriage is becoming as, as, as controversial as getting ordained a priest, okay? These are two of the sacraments of service. And so your love is meant to be, a marriage is to be a powerful sign because this is what men and women are designed for. You are, you are reaching your ultimate calling here today. And that is so important. And you're doing it in love. And so what exactly is love? Well, St. John Paul the Great, he said that there, there are four authentic uh, things that make love love, or, or, or qualities, excuse me, qualities of love that make love love. And we have Jesus the bridegroom laying down his life for his bride, the church. Uh, of all the analogies we have for Jesus, the good shepherd, the vine and branches, the least inadequate, St. John Paul the Great says, is that of bridegroom and bride. And so that is an awesome thing. Jesus talks about the, heaven being like an eternal wedding banquet, right? Come to the feast of heaven and earth, right? This is ultimately what we're called uh, to do. And so St. John Paul, he says, first of all, for love to really be love, it has to be freely given, okay? The Beatles had it right when they said, can't buy me love. Everybody tells me so. Can't buy me love. No, 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 no. You can't do it. It can't be like, and that's why I'm going to ask you, have you come here freely? True love is a choice. You don't fall into love. Could it be I'm falling in love? No. Okay. There's a lot of raunch, bad music out there. It's not necessarily, well, it is getting raunchier, but there's a lot of misguided music out there. Okay. But we love music, but we really think about it. Okay. So yeah. So it's freely given. It's a choice. Every day you get up and you choose. Jesus said, no one takes my life from me. I lay it down freely. And that's why one of the most beautiful movies ever made is one of the bloodiest movies ever made, The Passion of the Christ by Mel Gibson, where he actually shows Jesus crawling to the cross and placing himself on the cross. That's very powerful. Jesus chose to lay down his life for us. Thomas is choosing to lay down his life for Rachel. Rachel is choosing to lay down her life for Thomas. And so, brothers and sisters, what we have here is a dead man and a dead woman walking. They're dying to self. <laughs> And look how beautiful it is. They're dying. It's beautiful. Dying to self is selflessness. That is what makes love so beautiful. Now, so first it's free. Then it's total. Jesus held nothing back. He gave everything. He didn't give 50-50. Jesus gave his whole self. That's the same thing with the two of you. From here on out, there are no secrets. It is, your life is no longer your own. It's all about the other. And if you're constantly doing that, you will never feel wanting because your, your self-donation, you are constantly being poured out for the other. That, and if you keep filling each other's cup, it's going to be overflowing, right? It's going to be, it'll never run dry. When marriages run dry of love, 
I love that you did the wine, right? Because it's, it's beautiful. You want to keep that wine flowing, and that's how you do it, is you continue to make sure that you're keeping your spouse's cup full, okay? So again, it's total. It's total self donation It's free, it's total, and then it's faithful. Jesus said, I will be with you always, even unto the foundation of the world. I will never, ever leave you abandoned or alone. And, and that is really important. So I'm going to ask you again another question. This will be one of the I am's. Are you willing uh, to lay your lives down uh, for as long as you both shall live? I'm paraphrasing greatly, but it, it's going to end with that. Like, for as long as you live. And you will say, hopefully, I am. Absolutely. Uh, that is so important for us to remember that, that, that Jesus will never abandon us. I'm forever yours. There's a couple Journey fans here. Okay, right? Right? Girls, can you imagine some guy coming up to you and saying, For two weeks I'm yours, then I'll leave, right? Sounds like a country song, I know. On my John Deere tractor, right? Okay, no, it's, it, it's faithful. That's why we love those sorts of songs where I'm, I'm the forever yours, right? And Jesus is forever ours. And so, uh, again, in your marriage, I forgot to say that, marriage is a sacrament. We know the devil, anybody go to, to, to Catholic school or Christian school? A marriage, what is a sacrament? A sacrament, the simplest definition is it makes the invisible visible, right? Sacrament makes the invisible visible. So the bride and the groom, you're making visible uh, Jesus' love for his bride, the church. You're, that's how you're doing that, by living that out. And, and you're doing it freely, totally, and faithfully. And then finally, fruitfully. Jesus said, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces, produces much fruit. Jesus died so that the church might have life and have it to the fullness. Uh, uh, and that's why in, in the Eucharist, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood will never die. Okay, that, that is, that is life-giving. And so uh, it, it, it's, it's uh, fruitful. It gives forth life. And that is why, you know, practice now uh, being uh, self-donating because ultimately we're praying that your love will bring forth life, right? I'm going to ask you that. Are you open to children, all right? You all know the song, Thomas and Rachel sitting in a tree, K-I-S-S-I-N-G. First comes, then comes, then comes little Thomas or Rachel in a baby carriage, and then one after that, and one after that, and one after that, and one after that. Because we Catholics, we want to have lots of babies and take over the world. They nervously laugh at that, but that's the truth, okay? We want to restore the large offspring, right? Once you have one or two, the rest just fall into line and they all start taking care of each other, right? Okay, but that's just what we're hopeful for, right? Um, and again, I, one of my favorite philosophers, Dr. Peter Kreeft, he says, you know, a, a husband and a wife, they come together, and the wife in particular, there is nothing more selfless than giving your body over to a baby. And, and so you do the most unselfish act, and yet you give birth to one of the most selfish creatures ever, a baby. <laughs> Right? And it's a beautiful thing. And it's a beautiful thing. And he's like, well, I didn't mean to talk you out of it. Yeah, he, it's, <laughs> it. It's too late now, Thomas. Okay, no, no. <laughs> You'll find out. And it's all beautiful. It's all beautiful. So, hey, there's nothing more beautiful than a dad holding a baby, too. Yeah, well, moms, too, of course, absolutely. But more dads holding babies, too. So, so it's free, it's total, it's faithful, and it's fruitful. So but that is authentic love. That's what the, don't listen to how the world defines love, okay? That it, true authentic love is free, total, faithful, and fruitful. And so on this day, July 8th, 2023, we're going to do one final thing, then it's going to be time for Thomas and Rachel to get married. I hope you're ready. But we want to do one final thing. We want to put the rule into effect, and we want to practice the rule. Okay, for your marriage, okay? So, Thomas, I just want you to look at Rachel and just say to her four simple words. Say, Rachel, I love you. Right now. <laughs> Rachel, I want you to look at Thomas and just say those four words back to him. Thomas, I love you. How long did that take? How long? Four seconds, five seconds. Thomas, Rachel, four or five seconds, at least once a day, from each day forward for the rest of your lives. It will make a lifetime, an eternity of difference in your marriage. 
Words in marriage are powerful. They can destroy, they can tear up, and you constantly, no matter how crazy life gets, how much pain there might be, hopefully there's going to be plenty of joy, plenty of blessings, especially when times get up. And sometimes you're going to look at each other and say, what? just say those words, I, uh, Rachel, I love you. Thomas, I love you. Remind yourselves of the, the infinite good. This is the most infinite good out of ultimately dying and going to heaven that two human beings can experience in this world is, is to know that someone is willing to, to truly love and share a life with you. So remind each other of what it is that you uh, sacramentalized on July 8th, 2023. Never let another day go by without at least once a day reminding each other of your love. Do you promise? Hold up your right hands. Father Barry, we promise. It's not good to lie to a priest on your wedding day. It's not a good way to get started. So you all heard it, okay? So hold them to that. Say, hey, how many times you tell uh, Rachel you loved her today? Right, guys, girls? How many times you tell Tommy you loved him today? So really important. Amen? Brothers and sisters, it is now time for Thomas and Rachel to get married. If you would stand. Bridal party, if you would please come forward. around this way, Thomas. Okay, right around here. We're both going to step right up. Here's the center, so step up all the way up. Bridal party, come forward. Okay, come together. Come together. Perfect. You're going to hand your flowers off to them once she's done zhuzhing. Let's watch the bells here. Dearly beloved, you have come together into the house of the church so that in the presence of the church's minister and the community, your intention to enter into marriage may be strengthened by the Lord with a sacred seal. Christ abundantly blesses the love that binds you. Through a special sacrament, he enriches and strengthens those he has already consecrated in holy baptism, that they may be faithful to each other and assume all the responsibilities of married life. And so, in the presence of the church, I ask you now to state your intentions. I have, I am, I am. Okay, so here we go. Thomas and Rachel, have you come here to enter into marriage without coercion freely and wholeheartedly? I have. Are you prepared as you follow the path of marriage to love and to honor each other for as long as you both shall live? Are you prepared to accept children lovingly from God and to bring them up according to the law of Christ and his church? I am. Since it is your intention to enter into... Wait, skip something here. Hold on. Since it is your intention to enter into marriage, I ask you now to join your right hands and to declare your consent before God and his church. You're going to go first. I'll whisper and you just say it out. I, Thomas, take you, Rachel. I, Thomas, take you, Rachel. To be my wife. To be my wife. I promise to be faithful to you. I promise to be faithful to you. In good times and in bad. In good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love you and to honor you. To love you and honor you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. Okay, Rachel, just repeat after me. I, Rachel, take you, Thomas. I, Rachel, take you, Thomas. I promise to be faithful to you. I promise to be faithful to you. In good times and in bad. In good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love you and to honor you. To love you and honor you. All the days of my life. May the Lord in his kindness strengthen the consent you have declared before the church and graciously bring to fulfillment his blessing within you. What God joins together, let no one put asunder. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. You can hold your right hands flat like this. Okay, make the heart shape. There you go, perfect.
May the Lord bless these rings, which you will give to each other as a sign of love and fidelity. Okay, Thomas, you're going to take the ring now and take Rachel's left hand and just repeat after me. Rachel, receive this ring. Rachel, receive this ring. As a sign of my love. As a sign of my love. And fidelity. And fidelity. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Father. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Rachel, you just take Thomas' left hand. Okay, repeat after me. Thomas, receive this ring. Thomas, receive this ring. As a sign of my love. Fidelity. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. You may now kiss the bride. If you return to your seats by way of the center aisle, by way of the center aisle, and then you're going to lead her back to your chairs and remain standing. I would invite you all now to please stand with me as we continue to offer our prayers for Thomas, Rachel, and ourselves. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For this bride and groom, and for their well-being as a family, we pray to the Lord. Lord. For their relatives and friends, and for all who have assisted this couple, we pray to the Lord. Lord. For young people preparing to enter marriage, and for all whom the Lord is calling to another state in life, we pray to the Lord. Lord. For all families throughout the world, and for lasting peace among all people, we pray to the Lord. For all members of our families who have passed from this world, on this day in particular we remember Russell Myers and Joanne Zitko. And for all the faithful departed, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, the holy people of God, and for unity among all Christians, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, who are present in our midst, as Thomas and Rachel seal their union, accept our prayer and fill us with your Spirit, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated now as the altar is prepared and the gifts of bread and wine are presented. Sight, 
since he is at my right hand, I shall stand firm. O Lord, you are the center of my life. I will always praise you. I will always serve you. I will always keep you in my sight. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands through the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the offering made on the occasion of this sealing of the sacred bond of marriage. And just as your goodness is its origin, may your providence guide its course through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have forged the covenant of marriage as a sweet yoke of harmony and an unbreakable bond of peace, so that the chaste and fruitful love of holy matrimony may serve to increase the children you adopt as your own. By your providence and grace, O Lord, you accomplish the wonder of this twofold design. While the birth of children brings beauty to the world, their rebirth in baptism gives increase to the church through Christ our Lord. Through him, the angels and all the saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. time I would invite you, if you are able, to please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, 
together with Francis our Pope and Edward our Bishop and all the clergy. Be mindful also, Lord, of Thomas and Rachel, whom you have brought to their wedding day, so that by your grace they may abide in mutual love and peace. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Holy Father, who formed man in your own image, male and female, you created them, so that husband and wife united in body and heart, they might fulfill their calling in the world. O oh God, who to reveal the great design you formed in your love, will that the love of spouses for each other should foreshadow the covenant you graciously made with your people, so that by fulfillment of this sacramental sign, the mystical marriage, of Christ with his church might become manifest in the union of husband and wife among your faithful. Graciously stretch out your right hand over these your servants, Thomas and Rachel, we pray, and pour into their hearts the power of the Holy Spirit. Grant, O Lord, that as they enter upon this sacramental union, they may share with one another the gifts of your love, and by being for each other a sign of your presence, become one heart and one mind. May they also sustain, O Lord, by their deeds, the home they are forming, and prepare their children to become members of your heavenly household by raising them in the way of the gospel. Graciously crown with your blessings your daughter Rachel, so that by being a good wife and mother, she may bring warmth to her home with a love that is pure, and adorn it with welcoming graciousness. Bestow a heavenly blessing also, Lord, on Thomas, your servant, that he may be a worthy, good, and faithful husband and a provident father. And grant, Holy Father, that desiring to approach your table as a couple joined in marriage in your presence they may one day have the joy of taking part in your great banquet in heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to one another a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be. For Holy Communion, we're going to ask that you come forward by way of the center aisle forming two lines, and I will alternate back and forth. Everyone is um, welcome to come forward this uh, afternoon. If you're not Catholic, uh, simply come forward like this or come forward like, go like this, and I will be happy uh, to give you a blessing. Everyone is welcome to come forward. After I get done with the center aisle, I will move over to here, okay? So just be patient. to eat the 
mystery of your presence, Lord. No mortal tongue can tell, whom all the world cannot contain, comes in our hearts to dwell. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. Will you give yourself to us, O Lord, then a selfless let it be serve each other in your name, in truth and charity. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to Satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come and give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. As when the shepherd calls his sheep, they know and he voice, so when you call your family, Lord, we follow and rejoice. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come and give to us, O saving Lord. Let us pray. 
Having been made partakers at your table, we pray, O Lord, that those who are united in the, by the sacrament of marriage may always hold fast to you and proclaim your name to the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. This time, uh, I'm going to invite uh, Thomas and Rachel to uh, make an offering uh, uh, at the image of the Blessed Mother. This is an old practice in the church. Uh, they will pray for her intercession, that God uh, keeps them uh, healthy and holy, especially throughout their marriage, and when the time comes, that uh, they are the best of parents. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May God, the Eternal Father, keep you of one heart in love for one another, that the peace of Christ may dwell in you and abide always in your home. Amen. May you be blessed in your children, have solace in your friends, and enjoy true peace with everyone. Amen. And may you be witnesses in the world to God's charity so that the afflicted and needy who have known your kindness may one day receive you thankfully into the eternal dwelling of God. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay, you want to turn and face out. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor uh, to be able to present to you all for the very first time today Mr. and Mrs. Thomas and Rachel Zitko.
it going, guys. Just continuous flow.